Hello, I'm Felicia. And welcome to the forest moon of Endor. I'm so excited to be here. I recently did a collaborative video with my friends James and Odin from Rebel Base Build and Odin Makes. And we made this amazing helmet. And now we're back at it again to complete the cosplay. You wanna see how to make this communicator? Well, check out James's channel, Rebel Base Builds, because details like this matter. You wanna see how to make this blaster? Well, it's Odin made. Do you wanna see how to make this lovely poncho? Well, stay around and I'll show you how. Doing the first hood, I used scrap fabric that was left over from a Jedi build and didn't quite have enough to do the hood and an extended tail. So the front and the back hood ended up being the same length. But when I was using the fabric and looking closely at it, I was going, can't we just use a painter's tarp? And so I got a painter's tarp from Harbor Freight. This one's nine feet by 12 feet. So I'm going to cut it down, but at the fabric store for something very similar <laughs> that you can get, it comes in the right width and you can get it whatever length you want, but it was much more expensive than it was to get a painter's tarp, so. Okay. I fold the corners together and then I just walk the edges all the way until I find my center. I'm gonna cut through the seam to the fabric and fabric always tears straight of grain. I tore the tarp into quarters. So I'm gonna put one of these quarters aside for the poncho and think about it later. The other quarter I'm going to use to cut out my hood and my hat. Okay, I'm folding this fabric up as small as I can so I can fit on this table because you don't want your fabric hanging off the table. It will pull funny and you'll be fighting it and it's no fun. So here's my pattern. These are placed on the fold. Right here and right here, but I'm gonna take you Time to trace. I taped two pencils together to trace my pattern because I'm lazy and I didn't add my seam allowance and two pencils together is the perfect seam allowance. And as I trace, I'm adding my seam allowance. I transfer all my markings. My notches will help the pattern pieces fit together because I've added a little bit of ease and so it's not going to just line up exactly, but it, all these notches should line up exactly. And I will be easing in the front part of the poncho into the hood. That's all my notches, okay. One more piece and then I'm ready to cut. I cut out my upper hood, I cut out my lower neck, and I cut out my under hood. I used my already cut out upper hood as a pattern to cut out a second piece for the lining, also marking my notches. Make sure you have all your pattern pieces together because I know they will look like scraps and are easy to throw away. I've done it before. <laughs> I lay out my hood pieces pinning the two front hood pieces right sides together. There's a lot of ways you can do the pins and I know people who like to put their pins along the seam allowance like this, but then you're kind of making a commitment how you're coming up to the sewing machine before you ever get there and where you're starting to sew, where if they just are poking out this way, if you sew over them, they're not as big of a speed bump and you can easily avoid them. Because I, when I first started sewing and I would get my whole thing pinned on this side and then I'd go to the sewing machine and I needed it this way. And then all my pins were upside down and I'd have to repin. <laughs> so, that's how my pin stab out works. So I have to get those sewn before I can do the next part. Sewing machine. I like this thing. The sewing machine for camera. A 
Okay, we're threaded, <laughs> ready to go. I sew my first seam together. This is the face of the hood. I'm just gonna press it nice and flat. Depending on the weave of your fabric will depend on how easy or difficult this step is. The narrower your seam allowance, the easier it will be to flip but also the more likely it is to shred the seams. So you can clip and stitch your seam, but because this drop cloth is nice and a loose woven, it's just doing it so nicely that I don't have to do anything else other than just press it. And in order to flip this curb nicely, sometimes you might have to trim or stitch the seam allowance, but this fabric just seems to love it. The front of our hood, collar piece are lined. Our neck part and the back of our hood are not lined. I pinned the outside right side of the upper hood to the right side of the lower hood. Now this is where we're going to need those notches. So here's my double notches, here's my center front, and see how they do not line up, how there is definitely this one's longer than this one. I did that on purpose to torture myself. No, because it looked like she had some pleating and some easement going on in that area. So we incorporated it into the design. Now, this fabric doesn't hate me too much, so I'm just going to grab the centers and push them down, grab the centers and push them down. Just smoosh it and then smoosh it. Now the rest of these should line up much better, matching up my notches. Make sure that the fullness of your fabric is always on the outside of your sewing machine. You don't want to try everything trying to push, push it through this. And when we get to the easing, this section right here, we're going to keep the um, fabric that is the smaller fabric on top so that the bigger fabric gets gathered in and we're using the machine to do the hard part of it. Going nice and slow, keeping my pins in place, my easing got gathered in there really nicely. Look at that, that looks like the little pleat she has of the toy. I'm pressing all my seam allowances inside of my lining. I pressed all my seam allowance to the inside of the lining pinning as I pressed. Make sure you're either using quilting pins, these heavy duty plastic ones that can handle the heat of the iron or use glass headed pins. Be careful if you have those lovely pearl headed pins or the plastic ones with the flowers on the top. As soon as you put your iron on, you're gonna melt that into your fabric and then you're gonna regret your life because you'll have to recut it over and I've had that happen, so. Now I'm going to do my top stitching. As neatly as I can, I am going to increase my stitch length so you see it a little bit more. And I'm going to do a top stitch around the face line and also I'm where I pinned. I remember how I did my pins like this. I'm going to leave them under and live dangerously and sew over my pins. Just a note, I should have sewn the top seam of my hood before doing my top stitching, but I was so nervous about how the top stitching would turn out that I did it that way and I do not regret it. I think it turned out great. Oh, look how pretty a top stitch line makes things. I got my top stitching close to the points, but not all the way to the points, because now I'm gonna sew this seam, and I don't wanna have to deal with, and I did my top stitching before I started, so I'm gonna go in afterwards and finish just that point. But I wanted to get this all done before I made it a circle, just to make my life easier to press and make sure everything was as flat as possible. my wrong side, this is my right side, because this is the prettier side. And I'm gonna just mark it with the pin because the fabric looks the same on both sides. So I always know which side's my pretty side. I now have a pin in the center front. After it was all pinned together, I sewed my center back hood into place. I top stitched the seam allowances down. Head done. 
We have a poncho square cut out. It's ready for painting. Yeah, the top stitching really does make it look much nicer. <laughs> top stitching is your friend. I placed my hood to the side and began with hemming my poncho. The painter's tarp was more than enough fabric for a self-facing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I marked on my ruler how wide I wanted my sleeve edge hem, and I pinned it in place. And wings and root beer. Yes! <laughs> I'm putting the pins in this way on this seam, because there's no way that I'm gonna, they're gonna poke out if I put them the other way. And I know 100% that I'm starting at that end and sewing that direction with all my fullness on this side because I'm setting it up that way. After everything was pinned, I sewed very long seams through the sewing machine. Ready, set, go. I sewed a straight stitch all the way down both sides. I stopped here, leaving the hood and poncho separate so that it would be easier to paint. I prepped my painting surface with a lot of paper and plastic. Why are these one, two, three blocks in plastic bags, you ask? So they don't get paint on them. Way to be neat. Before I began, I prepped the canvas by just spraying it with water. Spray. Okay. I used acrylic paint Odin had in his workshop in various shades of greens, yellows, and creams. All right, I am using a lot of water because I really want this project to blend together. I sponged on the colors with a chunk of couch foam that I had picked at to avoid straight edges and give it a more organic shape. Let's let this dry for a bit and then I can come back with some gray, some browns and some spray paint. After I was done sponging on the paint, I went back with the light brown spray paint and finished off my camo print. I repeated the same process on the hood. When everything was dry, I folded my poncho into quarters. So we are going to mark the neck hole. We offset the front from the back so that the front is about five inches shorter than the back. So it looked good. I marked my neckline with a 5.25 inch radius. So straight for a quarter before starting to curve that. And when you get to this end, try and go back in straight so that you don't end up with points. No point. No point, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna mark our side seams and shoulders, center front and center back. So we're gonna mark our shoulder seams. Okay. 
center front, center back, shoulder, shoulder. Now we're gonna put right sides together. I'm gonna keep the hood right side out and I'm gonna put flip. Poncho over. This is our wrong side. This is our right side. To the right side. And geez, the weight. There you go. Center front to center front. It fit together really nicely. I was so glad that my circle math was correct. I sewed my final seam, attaching my hood to my poncho. Now, to finish this edge, I'm just gonna trim off all these extra little bits because they just get tangled and in the way. And now I'm going to take a piece of bias tape and make a casing for a drawstring in my hood so that you can control the circumference. And if you don't want it tightened, because Luke's doesn't seem to be at all, you don't have to tighten it. <laughs> when you do bias tape, there is one side that sticks out a little bit more than the other side. And this side goes on the bottom so that when you're stitching on the top, you are definitely getting the bias tape underneath. If you did it the other way and you're stitching along this side and you think you're getting right at the edge, you might not be catching the under part. Okay, so now we have a casing, finished edge, and a finished poncho. Sort of. A few more things that need to get done. But it's looking like a poncho! Do you want to try it on, Odin? Sure. There you go. It fits your elbows, it fits your back. The back is longer, the front is shorter, and your side seam should be right about here. Odin Voodoo Doll. So if I go here. I marked the holes for the belt loop. Take the doll, it actually hurts Odin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you don't have to have the hood on. <laughs> but that's where the drawstring would hold everything up. But. Right. Sweet. It's a finished poncho. It's, it's your size. Poncho. It looks good. It looks like his. Sweet. Hold on, hold on. I have to put on mine too. We have ponchos. We have ponchos. You ready for the rain? I think I'm ready for the rain. Look at I did the arms and it doesn't look so bad when I lift my arms up anymore. No, it's great. Yeah, it's the, the new color is fantastic. Yeah. So, not bright, blinding white. And yours is the lighter brown of Luke's and yep. he matches the insides of your arm sleeves. Yeah? Yeah. All right. We have to put the belts in so that we don't have to hold it to look right. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. I have a pen there. <laughs> I have a pen here. No, I may have moved uh, one of the pins. Pin oh, good. and I a did? pin. Okay, good. Yeah. I figured I'll even them out from either spot. <laughs> okay, so if I fold this in half, and I know that I'm evenly here and I'm even here, so if I do this is the top, this is the bottom, split the difference in this thing, they'll be centered. I'm gonna go from here to here on both sides. I slit the slit with a razor blade, cutting both layers with one cut. Cut both sides. And your belt's not wider than that. No, my belt doesn't exist for the belt. So it can be as wide as we need it to be. And I'm just gonna take a zigzag stitch all the way around so that it doesn't come undone. Okay. Just to finish the edges. Two slits, ready for a belt. <laughs> we need two ponchos. We got two ponchos done now. Luke and Leah's twin outfits. <laughs> Good, cool. Just need to, I need to finish the belts and some accessories for Leah. And then we're off to Endor. And then we're off to Endor. So this is a first for me. I've never been on location 
for the place that I was cosplaying before. Not that I remember. So this is really pretty cool. I know we're not in the actual filming locations, but we are in the Mirror Woods, so we are in the right area for the actual Forest Moon of Endor. Technically, we're on the right planet. <laughs> Technically, we're on the right planet. <laughs> in the right state. In the right state. In the right type of forest. In the right state of mind. As we play dress up, dressed up as Luke and Leia in their awesome ponchos with matching helmets. Are you guys jaunt jealous? I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I had a lot of fun with my very first YouTube video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. Oh, I had a lot of fun. And thank you for all your help and support and modeling this lovely poncho. So of all the different characters to cosplay as from Star Wars, I never thought I would actually be doing Luke Skywalker. It just wasn't on my radar. And this is really cool. <laughs> having a poncho that fits, having a helmet that fits, yeah, thank you. This is really cool. Thank you both. It turned out awesome. Thank you for all the help. And I had a lot of fun with this project. If there's any other videos you guys want me to do, this is my new channel. Give me suggestions. Give me challenges. Throw out what you guys want to see, and I will see what I can do. Because you know there's going to be lots of different ways that you can make a Rebel Poncho for the Forest Mood of Endor. But this actually isn't my video. I really can't say that. How do you want to end your video? Well, done is better than perfect, so there's that. <laughs> Stay tuned for more words of wisdom from behind the scenes fashions. <clears throat> Everybody got now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Felicia makes. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. This is really cool. Thank you so much, Odin. Oh, you're totally welcome. You're not getting this back, by the way. No, I wasn't expecting to get that back. Some assembly required.